In the not too distant future, sea levels rose because of climate change, so people moved into space. Having built shelters between the Earth and the Moon, humans spent decades relocating in what are called asylums. Soon asylums 8, 12, and 13 proclaimed the Adrian Republic and attacked the other asylums. Since then, a war has broken out, with humans living like cogs in a war machine. Among the garbage of robots, Captain Yoon, who wakes up and is immediately attacked by enemy robots, but her training was not in vain and she easily takes out a dozen enemies and reports to the command center that she cannot see her team with which she had to destroy the power unit. But then a new development of the Adrians comes along, the Zimba robot, whose only weakness is the battery in its back. After all, the rest of the material is explosive and heat resistant. Through human ingenuity, which the robot does not possess, Yun forces it to shoot at the beams and pelt itself with metal. But the moment she has to shoot the battery, she notices the fob and gets shot in the hand and sees not bones but sparks from the damage to the mechanism. Then she freezes and her pupils turn gray. You're right, it wasn't a real battlefield, but an imitation of a large chronoid corporation which is trying hard to create an artificial intelligence with combat skills belonging to the great warrior Chan Yi. Today is their big day, as Chief Kim presents his team's developments to the military committee, which immediately expresses its displeasure that it's Zhang Yi's fault the war has been going on for 40 years, because she failed in her mission. Dr. Yun Seo Hyun, the leader of this development, who is also Captain Zhang Yi's daughter, convinces the military otherwise, arguing that they have managed to extract only the most important data for combat from her mother's mind in order to create the perfect soldier. But so far their tests have not received a logical conclusion, so Yun Seo Hyun tells her that things are not so good yet, but she is confident in her project. After the presentation, they were told that if the simulation was successful, their project would be given the green light. So Yun Seo sets out rather to analyze the 17 sample and then destroy it. But during the analysis, the specimen's defenses became extremely high, so they had to destroy it and extract the brain. In the corridors, the doctor tells the ward that her mother went to war just to save her daughter from a tumor in her lungs. And it was the day she had the surgery that her mother died. So she's always wondered if her mother died for her daughter for nothing. The boyfriend prompts her that she can ask the robot, because in fact her memories remain. However, she now has some sort of ethics test and leaves the center, but sees other mother and daughter on the train, after which she has flashbacks from the past, where her still living mother asked her to stroke her cheek for good luck and went on a mission. But when the real Unesio arrives at the doctor's office, he explains to her that the cancer has spread to important organs, so she has about three months to live. At the center they were testing a new specimen, but their boss ordered her to shoot her in the leg, so she was defeated in the battle. But at this point a new yellow brain area was activated, which allowed her to take down her opponents but end up getting shot. The boss is extremely unhappy about this, and the new site should now be investigated. The next day, the company travels to Chronoid's main headquarters for a briefing. However, they are met not by the chairman of the council, but by his assistant Lee Se Young, who will be ready to listen to their successes. But Kim clearly doesn't like it and it turns out that their budget has been cut in half in order to create weapons. The new prototypes look much more progressive than before and it turns out that the chairman has arrived at Kim's office. He calls Dr. Yunso with him and on the way asks how long she's had the ethics test that distinguishes between human and robot, and in the office he petrified and the chairman shows up. The head of the corporation tells her that the Adrianov Republic is ready to sign a peace agreement, which means that the creation of a combat AI is no longer the goal and soon their department will be disbanded and the development will be led into science and similar industries. Subsequent attempts to awaken the yellow section of the brain failed time after time. Kim tried to augment the pain sensation department like the last time, by cutting off her arm and shooting at the same leg. Yuna Seo, however, intercepted the administration and shut down the robot. Finding herself at gunpoint, she refused to let him continue the experiment and he was immediately summoned by the chairman. 
She immediately went to the simulation room where she copied and uploaded data 22 but the cancer was already making itself felt. When she came to see how things were going 23 she noticed her mentee's strange behavior and found her naked mother in his room. Unesio pounced on the boy, but he told her he had received a command from HQ to create a Type C clone. This type of clone does not count as a person and will play the role of an adult toy in order for the company to make more money. A little later, Kim informs her that their project is being shut down tomorrow and Yunso goes to Johnny's last sample and talks to her peacefully about her daughter being okay. As the yellow section immediately begins to develop and the robot tells her that her daughter gave her a doll, which she lost, during the battle but was distracted by the toy and died before the robot was shot. Yunso, taking the blame for her mother, turns off the robot and does not hold back her tantrums. She takes the last simulation alone and strikes the yellow department, realizing it is the memory of her daughter, a toy she managed to lose in the battlefield and when she noticed that she died. Yunso whispered to her that her body would be extracted and put into some kind of coma, so she asked the robot to be ready. The testing went on as usual and the fact that there was strange activity in the brain was of little interest to the boss. He wished everyone good luck and left his project. But when Yunso follows him out of the office and clears all data on Yung Yi's memories to save his mother's honor, the boss walks down the hall and realizes something and returns to the location where the cameras show that Zhang Yi dodged a bullet in the head and survived. At this time, the scientists pick her up and take her away. But she has already overpowers them in the elevator and Kim triggers the alarm. He's going to put their artificial intelligence to the test. So she launches the latest prototypes which Zhang Yi fights, and the police reinforcements arrive at the lab at the same time. Yun Yi manages to defeat all but the last prototype, but is aided by Yun So, who shuts down the robot from the network. When the police arrive, they kill Yun Yi and Yun Seo leaves the scene with another prototype. When the police start checking the cameras, it becomes clear that Yun Seo switched the robot's brains and left the lab with her mother. However, waiting for them on the train was Kim, who didn't appreciate her feat of betraying the chairman and shot Yun So. For which Yung Yi deftly moved into close combat with him and wounded him, and Kim realized that he was in fact one of the prototypes, so he confronted Yung Yi in combat with renewed vigor. The police arrived to help and Yung Yi overpowers even them, and after throwing Kim off the train, he turns out to be a lucky boy who, with the help of a policeman, returns for his enemy. But with Yunso's help, the prototype manages to get out of the police wagon, which immediately falls with Kim. A touching moment begins on the train. Zhang Yi is about to help her daughter, but she explains that she doesn't have much longer to live because of cancer, so she asks her to leave and the robot does so, escaping into the woods and enjoying her new freedom. The film is dedicated to Kang Soo Yoon. Please support the channel with your likes and subscribe. Our goal is 10,000 subscribers. We are trying very hard just to reduce your time in watching movies. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I won't say goodbye.